What is going on guys welcome back and today I'm going to show you five very awesome PyCharm tricks that you can use to speed up your coding and increase your productivity in this development environment. So let us get right into it. Alright, so the first useful thing that we're going to talk about that you can do in PyCharm is you can press Control Shift and A to find an action. Now, what is an action? An action is essentially everything. In Python, you have a bunch of different keyboard shortcuts to do certain things. You have menus, you can click on stuff, you can open views, you can split views, whatever. Whatever you want to do, you can just type what you think it is called and you can try to do it by pressing Control shift a and uh, trying to do it. For example, split, I can type split, it's searching, split right. There you go, it splits the pane into the right side. Now, of course, I can also do it with probably uh, dragging this window to the right or uh, going to view and uh, finding a way to split. But sometimes I don't know where the option is. Sometimes I don't know how to do it. So I can just type or press Control shift a and split in this case, I can also do something like um, theme in order to click here and change the theme. I can also, okay, now I changed the theme. This is not good at all. So let's do it again. Uh, I think it was one dark, right? There you go. Uh, then control shift A, I can also, I think I can even do some basic stuff like scroll. So even stuff that you can do with, uh, with your keyboard or with your mouse. So scroll down, scroll up. So in this case, let's go ahead and add some lines here, whatever. Let's go up here. And now let's do scroll, scroll down, there you go, it scrolls down, uh, at least a little bit. And um, this is just a general tool that you can use. Oftentimes, I think uh, you even get the keyboard shortcut. So for example, when I do something like the lead, you can see the delete keys associated. If I do something like copy, you can see control C is uh, associated. So we can do every action by pressing control shift A. Um, and you can also see what the shortcut would be if we would do it the proper way. So copying, you don't want to copy with control shift A copy, you can just use control C or in the Vim mode Y, which is not displayed here. But this is a very nice and useful trick that you can just type the name of an action what you think it will be called. For example, also stuff like refactor or stuff like uh, find and files or stuff like uh, decrease the font size, everything can be done here with control shift A. The second thing that I want to show you here is that we can inject languages into Python code. So we can use HTML code or SQL code, for example, in Python and get the respective syntax highlighting with PyCharm. So for example, I can just say here string one equals and then I can define a multi line string and I can just write some basic text here, nothing special. But I can also go ahead and try to write HTML code. So HTML, HTML, uh, and you can see there's no syntax highlighting here. So I can just continue to do that head, head. And I can continue to write some basic HTML code without syntax highlighting here. However, if I go ahead now, and I delete this, and I go to the beginning, and I press Alt Enter, you can see here that we have this inject language or reference option, we click on it, we can choose from a bunch of different languages here. Now, not all languages are supported, you cannot do the same thing for uh, as far as I know, C code, for example, but you can do it with CSS, you can do it with Angular, everything that could be related to Python in terms of maybe using Django as a framework here. Also, JavaScript is available. Uh, and we can go now to where is it HTML? HTML, there you go. And I can go ahead and say HTML. And I can say head. And I can say body. And I can close the tag. And you can see also we even get auto completion. And I even get here um, stuff like I think this is at least HTML um, auto completion here, I can say P style equals now this is not uh, the plugin, this is not PyCharm, this is a plugin. Uh, but I can say style equals and then maybe font size 12 points, come on 12 PT. And there you go. So we have the syntax highlighting of HTML, also the auto completion. I think the same can be done with SQL. So uninject language, then inject language again. And we can go with do we have MySQL? Um, MySQL, there you go. And then I can say select star from table name where and you can see we get the syntax highlighting. So this is a nice thing, I think, 
when you have a string, you can just go alt enter and say, okay, uh, we want to, <clears throat> we want to take this and treat it like SQL code or HTML code. And in general, with alt enter, you get a lot of options. So in this case, for example, we can convert this to a sub query, for example, uh, kind of cool. So you have a lot of features and this can be quite useful as well. The third trick is now a little bit more specific because it focuses on regular expressions, something that we don't use in all the projects all the time, but still I think it's quite useful. And for that, we're going to just import RE and uh, I'm gonna just copy and paste here a regular expression that I prepared. And here we have just a simple line of code that matches uh, a string to a regular expression. So we have this regular expression here and we wanna know if it matches or if this string matches the regular expression. And in this case, it's a regular expression that uh, tries to find emails, tries to detect emails. Um, and what we can do here in PyCharm is we can just go inside of the regular expression here somewhere and again, press Alt Enter and we can click on check reg exp. And what you can see here is that we can uh, specify a sample that we want to check for in real time. So I can just type some text. You can see it's not uh, matching the regular expression as you can see here by this symbol. And if I say hello, it doesn't match it. If I say hello at it doesn't match it. Hello at something here doesn't match it. But if I now say hello at something dot something, it is matched. So you can see in real time how this regular expression works. And this is just a small, very specific trick, but it's something that can uh, be very useful if you're constructing regular expressions. You don't have to go to the internet and try to find some reg exp uh, pattern matcher checking tool or anything like that. You can do it in PyCharm while you're developing. So um, this is a very useful thing as well. Now the next trick is very useful and can massively speed up your coding. Uh, it is about code snippets, about code templates, and those can be found by clicking on file settings. And then I think editor life templates, and then you go down to Python and you can see all these snippets. Some of them are predefined. I have also, uh, I think this one is custom here, but essentially we have certain snippets already in PyCharm and we can add more custom snippets for certain structures. So for example, we have something like comp li and you can see here now this is a list comprehension snippet i can just press enter and we get this list comprehension now i can type something for example hello i can um press enter then i can type for h and um then i can if h is equal to two for example whatever uh, I can construct a list comprehension with that snippet. And a list comprehension is a quite small thing. We also have different uh, ones here. I think uh, main is one. So this main structure is also a, a very simple and small one. Uh, what else do we have? I think we have iter e for iterate with enumerate. Uh, essentially, we just say collection here. And then uh, whatever element. <clears throat> So that can be done here uh, with a snippet. But the interesting thing is not using the snippets that they're already uh, that already exist in PyCharm. The interesting thing is creating your own snippet. So you go to settings, you go to live templates here. So editor live templates, and you can just create your own snippet. So for example, this one here, I created myself. Uh, we have this simple if else menu. So uh, we have if and then you specify with these uh, dollar symbols, the variable. So the control variable and then the value one, value two. Now let's maybe do it again. So let's just say life template. Um, and then we have something like if and then dollar var. Um, let's just call it my var this time. And then uh, is equal to and then I can specify val one here. Um, and then I can say pass and then I can say elif. And then I can say my var again equals this time a different value val two and then pass. So this is just uh, a coding snippet that is filled up with these variables here. And then I can say else and I can say pass as well. Okay, now I closed it. Why did I close it? Uh, I hope it was not deleted. Probably it was deleted. However, okay, I'm not going to do it again doesn't matter. Uh, but essentially, you have the abbreviation that you specify here, you have the 
um, code. In this case, now we have control variable instead of my var. Uh, but you just specify a structure like this. And then the only thing that you need to do is you need to go down here to um, change, I think, and you need to specify that this is applicable in Python. And you can also specify where exactly some snippets are only applicable in classes, for example, so outside of classes, you will not be able to use them. Uh, and here you just specify all of them. So you can use this snippet everywhere. And now when you have that, you can say if else menu, enter and you have this structure. So now I can say here, uh, if choice, and then I can say enter is equal to one is equal to two. And then I'm done. So this is the whole structure And this, you can create massive snippets like that with uh, 20 variables with uh, 30 lines of code. Now I'm not saying this is useful to do that. But you can do that if you want to, you can just go to live templates, uh, do that also for the different languages. So if you're coding in JavaScript as well here, um, you can also use the uh, property, for example, property getter, or props, what is props? Let's see. Yeah, so props seems to be a little bit longer, I think maybe props can only be used in classes, though. So I think if I say props here, it doesn't work. If I say class test, I think props should work here. There you go. Um, yeah, but this is a very useful thing. I'm not using it too much myself, I need to start doing that because I'm using code snippets in Vim in NeoVim. I have to start using them in PyCharm as well, because that is a very useful feature. And last but not least, I want to show you a feature that can be probably compared to the undo tree plugin of NeoVim, uh, where you can see the local history of a file here that you have locally stored, uh, similar to a GitHub repository, maybe uh, you can just click on a file, right click on a file here and go to local history, show history, and then you can see exactly what happened here. Uh, you can see exactly how it happened. And um, you can also go to previous states of the file. So here this file actually is a file that I've, I'm using already for multiple tutorials. So I think um, for the pandas exo tutorial, if it's online already, I think even for um, what do we have here? Also for the UUID tutorial. So I basically use the same main py file here all the time. And you can see all the history what happened exactly uh, my vim actions, my deletion, <clears throat> sorry, uh, my creating of, uh, of a new script, whatever, you can see the history here, very, very long history, uh, what happened, and you can jump to previous versions, which can be quite useful, because it's not only for a session, it's sort of cross sessions. So this is a very nice feature as well. Um, if you want to go back to a previous version of the file. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.